struggling with identity and sexuality from a young age, being sexually abused at just 10 years old and suffering at the hands of a 10 year eating disorder are just some of the parts of Sophie's journey. And this is one of huge determination, strength, courage and resilience. <laughs> Welcome back to Irrepressible Ordinary People with Extraordinary Resilience and we've got a big one for you today. In this episode I speak to Sophie and believe me, her story is incredible, remarkable in fact. And there's so many different things that we go into here that it's beyond comprehension that Sophie sits in front of us today sharing her story in the way that she does. It's honestly leaves me simply amazed. And this is why I do this. This is why Irrepressible began, because I recognized and knew that within all of us, there are incredible stories. And this is perfect example of exactly what I'm talking about here. Honestly, sit back and watch this. You, you, your jaw will be on the floor throughout the, whole, throughout the whole journey. And listen, what Sophie brings is the knowing that we can move through our experiences and become stronger as a result of them. And, and, and Sophie is absolute testament to that. If this is the first time that you've ever been here, please do make sure that you have subscribed and turned on the notifications and sit back, hold on to your jaw and hear this incredible story. So Sophie, I'm joined by you today. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I've got no idea where we're gonna go here. Uh, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, feeling good. It's good to be here. Yeah, yeah, good, glad, glad. And uh, look, as a way of introducing it, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and, and what you're doing in the world? Okay, so obviously my name's Sophie. Um, I'm, I'm a lifeguard um, and fitness instructor. And that's pretty much been my job for the last three, four years. Um, and I'm really passionate about all things fitness and mental health. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much me at the moment. <laughs> cool, yeah, brilliant. And do, do you see the two as being very much into, entwined as in fitness and, and mental health? And 100%, I think whether you go to the gym or if you just do running or whatever, it has a massive impact on your mental health, uh, both like come hand in hand. Um, and for me, luckily fitness came at the right time. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, and I'd imagine we're probably going to hear some of that now. Um, so look, why don't we jump straight in? And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll hit you with the, the first big question, really, which is what, what adversity have you faced that's, that, that, that's meant that you've had to be resilient? So my, my kind of mental health struggle started really young, um, about like six or seven years old. And around that time, it's purely down to like, identity like I struggled massively with my identity at that point um I remember vividly like looking things up on google like questioning like my sexuality whether I was a girl or a boy all that kind of stuff and at that age it was very full-on um and during that time sport was a big thing for me like I was playing football and badminton at quite a high level and um, but for me it was everything for me it was like an outlet um school I wasn't very academic so school was um sport was like everything um and then as I got older um when I was about 12 I developed anorexia and I had that for like 10 years 10 11 years so like a good chunk of my childhood kind of went um and the last couple of years, uh, I developed PTSD and uh, schizophrenia. And for the last couple of years, it got like really full on. Um, I nearly lo lost my life through uh, suicide as well. So it's kind of, it's been full on. And I think looking back now, I <laughs> without, you don't really think about it when you're going through it, but when you reflect, you realize just how like strong you are to have like gone through all that and then kind of you're still here so yeah. it's quite it's good it's good to know <laughs> listen I, I, 
It, incredible. And look, this is why I say I really love to come into these interviews like like blind. So I've got because I've got no idea what you're going to say. And then for you to tell me that you've been through all of those things. Right. And to sit there. I don't know you, you know, as, as a person, but to be able to sit there in the way that you have is incredible. So I want to I, I want to ask if you, if you don't mind a couple of questions. When did the do, do you remember a time when the whole struggling with your identity came into play or was it something that you always always remember feeling um it's something that I've always like struggled with um and obviously at a young age um it it was like really full-on and like I was just like so confused as to like who I was as a person I was constantly comparing myself to other girls other people and that made me kind of question myself even more and just get into my head um and and then I think it was about two years ago now three years ago now I obviously came out so that was a big thing for me um but the last few months um I've been doing a lot of like self-development like healing and in August um I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and at first I was completely shocked. I was, because obviously I hadn't heard of it, um, but after like a lot of research and everything, it kind of makes a whole load, load of sense. Um, just thinking about like my identity issues, um, the anorexia. Um, I was also, when I was, when I was 10 years old, I was sexually abused as well. So that was, that kind of correlated with like the PTSD um and yeah so getting that diagnosis was a big thing for me but I only see it as a positive um because it's allowed me to learn about myself and yeah. be me basically do, do, do you think society played a big part in your struggles with identity in terms of the way that we look at gender where we make it this very binary thing where mm. you know I, I've got daughters now and even my youngest who's like very athletic and stuff when we we can't even get a pair of tracky bottoms right that because yeah. of the way in which everything's sold did, did, did that play a part in you feeling like you needed to fit yourself into to one of the boxes yeah I think subconsciously it did at the time um like social social media didn't really like bother me too much but I think over the years with like different things coming out and more people um, kind of putting themselves out there. You're constantly comparing yourself to them. Mm. And I was always thinking that because I wasn't interested in a lot of the stuff that the other girls were into, so like hair, makeup, uh, dresses, like you wouldn't catch me in a dress like at all. Or, but, and so because of that, I used to question like whether like, I was meant to be a girl or like what like I used to say just think to myself like what's wrong with me like why can't I be like a real girl so to speak and I don't know I just I've never been into that stuff I've always been all about sport like you would only catch me being outside um like those things didn't just never interested me um but over the last, like, I would say five, six years, I think social media is playing a massive part in people's mental health, um, both in a positive and negative. But it's it's a big thing. It's, an, it's a big issue at the moment, I think. Yeah, well, in, in the way that we try and measure up and compare ourselves, I guess. Yeah, because I think with, with social media, you only see... Um, like the good side of people's um, lives. Um, Cause obviously like we do, <laughs> a lot of people don't like to share like the bad times. And so people, when you are going through um, a, a struggle, when you're struggling and everything, you see people's um, like having a bit, having fun, buying all these new things, um, like transformations kind of thing, comparing yourself like physically and mentally mm. um it does it does get to you um you, you wonder to yourself like 
why why can't I be like that? Why can't I do this? Things like that. Um, and I've learned the hard way that like you just you just got to be yourself. Like if you're comparing yourself to other people, you'll never be happy. Um, and by being yourself, that's how real people come into your life, new, real opportunities. And yeah, it just doesn't doesn't matter what other people think. <laughs> yeah, you 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 come across to me um, now as quite comfortable in in, in who you are um, yeah. and like in, in in your skin, right? And, and and based on what you're telling me, that's obviously not always always been the way, right? No, what, definitely not. What What do you think? How do you think you got to? where you are today when you when when you look back at your life how do you think you've because when you reached out to me as well and we first started spoken what what was very clear to me is that you were like I, you're like I want to it's now I want to use my experience I want to get out there I want to tell people yeah. tell people some truth how have you found yourself in that space despite everything that you've been through uh, I think over the years I've had like so much help from from friends, from family, from doctors, from different kind of therapists, all that kind of stuff. And even though I've always been someone that always like pretends to be okay, um, for all the times that I had spoken, those small conversations over the years just, I think, kept me going. And I've, there's been many times where I have like reached rock bottom, but knowing that I had certain people around me, like kept me going. And more importantly, um, especially over the last couple of years, um, dealing with the PTSD, knowing that I had the gym was huge. Like was in the beginning stages of um, the diagnosis, I'd lost even complete like, love for the gym and when that happened that's when I just completely gave up I think in the back of my head it was still there and no I think knowing I had that I don't know how it's so powerful but it just it just kept me it kept me going so I'm very lucky I'm very lucky to be here uh, I'm grateful to be here and the people um, especially uh, my friends they've just been amazing just so amazing yeah it's so and it's almost like it shows a lot of humility in that you're able to um I don't know talk about the people close to you and what they've meant like your friends do you know what I mean and and, and how they've been been able to be there it, 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 if you had to pick the things that really stand out that have enabled you to be resilient what what what, what do you think they would be I mean I guess it's kind of a similar question like the people around you is really important and you, you, your fitness and and the gym yeah. is there anything else you'd add I think definitely those two main things but also uh music um I think that's I've always um been into singing that's always been something I've done mainly in my room <laughs> But then when I had anorexia and I was then made an inpatient, I obviously had to stop all the sport. And at that point, uh, that's when music became more than just something I did in my room. Like, and straight away, I just, I've just developed this like emotional connection. So whenever I sing, whenever I've got music um, playing in my ears, I just go to a different different place and I don't think people really understand just what it does to me um I it just changes my mindset completely and so whether I'm happy whether I'm sad music is everything and it's got me through a lot of dark places yeah is there particular types of music just just anything like anything I think I think up until like last year I would listen to anything and everything but when I was um, going through um, the suicide um, I um, I remember laying in like the hospital bed and 
it's I've never actually like said this like to people before but it felt I felt nothing at the time I felt so numb but then out of nowhere I felt like something was just taking all that pain away that I've been holding for like so many years and straight away that's when faith came into my life and it just became like a just something that I've become very into and I truly believe in and um, it's introduced me to uh, like specific music. Um, there's one guy that I listen to called Danny Goki. Um, his music, like whether whether you believe in faith or not, like his music just takes you to like another place. And the lyrics, I think if people listen to lyrics uh, a lot more, it just it just changes your mindset. Yeah, there's some, there's some, there's actually some, uh, some like, uh, what do they, I forget what, it's a genre of music, but it's like a Christian based music. There's certain yeah. stuff from that, right? And I would, like, I wouldn't say that I'm a Christian or anything like that. I mean, I've had periods where I've explored it, but the music does something. It unlocks something. Definitely. And I think, I think those things, they, they almost seem like too simple and they get missed off. And mm. for you to sort of say that you, you know, you feel that shift in you and it's just, it often gets kind of ignored that shift that I think happens to everybody in. And, and, and I've done so many of these interviews that every, nearly every single person has that moment where there's a shift in them and something shifts and they almost, I mean, you call it faith. A lot of people call it just different things because there, there, there doesn't seem to be a word that kind of sums it up. Yeah, I think everyone's everyone's journey is different. I think um, for me, uh, last year, I was, because through uh, my experience with anorexia, I started this whole fundraising journey when I was like raising like so much awareness and money and everything. And I soon realised up until my last event, um, last year um, I did the Edinburgh Marathon and there and then that's when like my body and mind just like completely gave up and uh, along came the, the PTSD but I think that was a sign that I like it was time for me to really start facing the things that I had been blocking out and since then, like the last year ha has been really full on. Um, I think obviously the first lockdown didn't help. So obviously it was like right at the beginning stages of my breakdown. Um, but when I, when I, um, in August, when I came out of hospital, I realized that I really needed to get myself sorted. Like there was no way I was going back to feeling suicidal, feeling scared, feeling lost, all that kind of stuff. Like I've been all those things like my entire life. And I had to make a lot of changes. Um, I changed changed my gyms, changed um, the people I surrounded with. Um, and I just really had to like focus on myself really. And the those changes have worked wonders for me. Um, the, pe the new people that have come into my life I've just like I don't think even they realize just how important they are they have become to me mm. and it gave me the confidence to after a lot of healing um which I've still got a bit to do but I've um between August and November yeah November I was doing a lot of self-development working on the things that I've been uh like ignoring uh, forgiveness and that all those things combined gave me the confidence to speak my truth about the sexual abuse, uh, which I um, did a video on. Nervous as nervous as hell, but like the response that I got, the feeling that I got in myself was just um, it felt like a massive weight off my shoulder, mm. and I could finally be myself. Um, yeah, no, it is, it's, it's all good. I'm super grateful. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, and, and just to, you know, to have struggled with your identity in the way that you did and then to have that, that, that abuse, like, sat on top of it must have just 
created such a cauldron of different emotions and feelings and, and experiences that, you know, I'd imagine will take a lifetime of unpicking. Do you know what I mean? But the fact that you, you're able to be here in the way that you are, I just think it's incredible. I mean, it's, it's, this is just, this uh, genuinely though, I, I genuinely mean this. And I say this a lot when I do these things because of the type of people that I get to interview. This is why I do this because, because you can't sit back and hear you share and talk about your experience in the way that you have and not be just dumbfounded by the absolute kind of incredibleness of, of, of the human being, you know, and what we're capable yeah. of, 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 of coming through, you know? Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. Like I've, I've always downplayed myself. I've always like, um, I've always been that person that hates anything being, hates anything good being said about me and all that kind of stuff. But because I've been so focused on my healing, I've realized it's just, it gave me a chance to really reflect on everything. Um, like about a couple of months ago, um, I went back to the place where I was making um, my uh, attempts and for me to go back there was such a surreal moment. It was an emotional moment. And I just I just teared up because like that's that's when it hit me, like everything that I've been through, and yet I'm still here. It just shows you that whatever struggle you're going through, like there is a way out. Like it might not seem it, like you might feel like given up and that's that's how I really felt like I was set on just ending everything to be perfectly blunt and the fact that I'm still here uh seeing the doctors and nurses try and save me uh it's just it's just a surreal moment like it's hard to put into words but um we as humans are amazing like it's, it's, it's so it's crazy it's really crazy it's, it's incredible honestly it's it, it i just it i get left in awe to just hear that you know that you go back <laughs> and you visit that place and uh you see it and you, you're there you know and you're just proof that whatever happens you know it's worth holding on because 100 percent, 100 percent. like I'm, one of my friends the first like in november my friend because uh, I knew I wasn't ready to go on my own, um, my friend came with me and we just stood there and we just both, because she had been um, by my side since I was like 15 and we just both started talking and crying and stuff like that and it was just a real moment and then a few weeks ago I decided to go up there by myself and that's when it really hit me so yeah, no, it, it's it's crazy. It's crazy, but um, the the people um, around me that I've got now, I've just been like people have really stepped up for me, and I'm just I'm just super blessed to be here. Yeah, incredible. What, what would you say the biggest learnings about yourself are? What do you think you've learned most about yourself? Oh, I think uh, definitely. I'm stronger than I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've always underestimated myself in like everything, like always downplayed it. So um, my my inner strength has definitely uh, surprised me. Um, and also I think knowing that when I really focus on myself, it everything around me just changes um like the people I surround myself with uh routines habits um and just knowing that putting yourself first isn't selfish like I used to think that doing things for myself buying things for myself like I just think I'd never deserved it and I was all about helping other people and doing things for other people and don't get me wrong I still love that like when I was fundraising um would be that was like the best best time of my life but I was forgetting about myself 
and that played a massive effect on my mental health. Um, so just knowing that in order to be happy and healthy, you need to put yourself first. Like no one else is going to be there for you apart from you, like forever. So yeah, those, those two things have definitely hit me. <laughs> Incredible. Listen, this has just been, uh, you know, everything that I hoped it would be, you know, to, to, to have you sit there and share so courageously in the way that you have. I just know this is going to help so many people. I'm hugely grateful for your That's strength and plan, courage. Yeah, yeah and definitely. I, I mean, this, I hope as many people as possible see this. Um, and I'm, I'm going to shout about you a little bit from the rooftops today. I think, <laughs> this evening. I'll say that we've recorded this. I can't wait to get it out because Thank honestly, you. I just, you know, I just think there's so much, there's so much uh, power in people's stories when, when, when they share them. So look, before I just uh, wrap it up, is, it, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Just that, um, obviously, during these times, it is hard. Like, like everyone on a personal level, business level is struggling. But I guess through me speaking my truth and I try and be as honest as possible on my page as I can about my mental health. Um, and if I can help just one person, then it's all worth it. And just know that if you are struggling right now, just please, please, please do not give up. Um, just look inside of yourself and dig deep because there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and obviously if I can, if I can get through what I've been through, then anyone, anyone can get through it. So true. Strong. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. And what is your page? Just so people know, I'll put it in the comments as well, but what, what is your page so people know yeah, where to so find it? Yeah, so my page is at beat underscore fit underscore foodie. Okay, brilliant. Uh, like I say, it, I'll link it as well so that people can make sure that they can definitely find thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you again, honestly. So grateful for your time. So grateful for your ability to be able to share everything that you've been through and I can't wait to share it with everyone. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>